and sold for twenty dollars. Next up, this lovely new film. Only just out and already a multi-award winner. Perfect for a Christian family or anyone interested in early church history. Who will start the bid with 15? I'll give you 15. 18. Oh, surely this film's worth more than 18. Who will give me 20? I'll give you 20. 25. I will give you 50. And sold! Your name, sir? They used to call me the storyteller. But you can call me Zach. This week, I'm looking at Polycarp. Is it worth watching? Find out on this week's Indie Christian Review. Ah, uh, the first and second century, one of my favorite periods in church history. Not without their own problems, of course, but on the whole, you could almost consider it to be the purest form of Christianity in the way the church was supposed to be. The movie Polycarp came out earlier this year, 2015 for those of you watching in the future, and is about the second century church leader Polycarp. Well, that's only half true. While Polycarp is a main character, our primary protagonist is actually a young slave girl named Anna. Mm. Don't mark her. We want a good price for the girl. Spew! However, a woman named Melina is led by a dream to the auction and feels led to try to buy Anna. Melina is outbid, but is assisted by the timely arrival of Polycarp himself. Melina takes Anna home, where she and her husband promptly free and adopt her as their own daughter. As Anna begins her new life, she is introduced to a group of people unlike any she's ever seen. Christians, led by Polycarp. Their love, joy, and peace begin to have a profound impact on her. But this peaceful life is soon threatened. I set forth a new proclamation that all will be devoted to our beloved Caesar by offering incense and proclaiming him as your Lord and your God. And so now Polycarp and the other Christians must stand firm in the face of growing persecution, and Anna must decide whose side she's going to take. I really enjoyed this movie. It's got a great blend of drama, history, suspense, and it's a good lighthearted moments to help relieve some of the tension from that suspense. To me, one of the most impressive parts of Polycarp is the art design. With this being a period piece filmed in Ohio, everything had to be made from scratch for this movie. Every prop, every set, the costumes all had to be made, and they did a phenomenal job. The attention to detail is amazing, and the overall quality of the set pieces are unlike any I've ever seen in any Christian film before. It does look like they did some CGI set extensions and exteriors that to me were kind of obviously CGI, but it came out in sort of a stylized way that I felt worked artistically. And honestly, I'm sure the visual effects team did a lot more work that I couldn't see, so this is by no means a fault. Now, while many of the characters like Polycarp and Germanicus were based off of actual people, I thought it was a good idea that they took the main character of Anna and actually made her a fictional character. She's got a great arc throughout the story, and her actress, Aaliyah Hurt, was phenomenal. I did feel that there was one vital element to her character that was missing, though, and that would be her backstory. When we first meet her, she's being sold as a slave, and then she's adopted by this Christian family. But we're never told where she came from. I mean, was she an orphan? Was she kidnapped? Or was she a prisoner of war? Was she sold by her parents to pay off debts? I mean, we're not even told how long she's been a slave. To me, not knowing if her real parents were alive or not made Elias and Melina's adoption of her feel presumptuous. I mean, how did they know it was okay to adopt her as their own daughter? I mean, they didn't even ask her about her family. So, do you have a family somewhere, child? My parents died when I was little. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey everyone, we've got a new kid now. See, just a little throwaway line like that would have been helpful to me. Now, an aspect of the characters that I really admired was the courage that they showed, even to the point of death. Persecution and death of believers is a very real facet of the story, just like it has been throughout history. While nothing graphic is shown, people do fight to the death in the arena, 
They're fed to the lions, the people are burned at the stake. But don't worry parents, Polycarp is Dove family approved for all ages. You know, for kids. Seriously though, it's all implied, nothing is shown, but you do still get a very real sense of the peril the characters are in. But the best part is seeing the courage that these early believers had in being willing to lay down their lives rather than deny their lord. Now, I've been asked by many people lately to include a scoring system in my reviews to kind of help quantify what I mean when I say a movie is worth watching. So after some feedback from Facebook and Twitter on how to best go about it, here is how I would rate Polycarp. For the acting, I would rate it 4 out of 5. The leads are solid, though some of the minor characters could have been a bit better. For the writing and the story, also a 4 out of 5, but mostly because of my nitpicks about Anna's lack of backstory. Production values and cinematography are a solid 5. This movie is gorgeous to look at. And for my overall score, I'm actually going to give it a 5 out of 5. The weaknesses I nitpicked on are really quite minor and don't really detract from the overall film. Polycarp is an incredible, inspiring film, and I highly recommend it. Check out the links below to pick up your own copy. Now, I've got a question for you. What period of Christian history do you feel that the church most got it right? What I mean is, what point after Jesus' resurrection do you feel that the church really got it down as far as the most biblically accurate way of living out a Christian life? If you're watching this anywhere besides IndieChristianReview.com, head on over there and leave a comment and let me know what you think. If you like what I do here, please subscribe and consider supporting the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash storyteller. Thank you all so much for watching. May God bless you, and may God bless independent Christian films. Thank you.